Welcome back. Today we are studying again another section on logarithms. This one is on section 4.4, Laws of Logarithms. Uh, we'll be looking at how you can add and subtract logarithms, how you can, uh, how you can then uh, manipulate these logarithms uh, in terms of sort of like algebraic things you can do with them. Um, the arithmetic of them, I guess, is what, what I'm trying to get at here. And we'll look at how you can uh, change the base of a logarithm. So if you don't like the base that a logarithm is in, you can rewrite it, if you will, in another form with a different base, which comes in handy from time to time. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Uh, last time, we, we left off with just the graph of a logarithm, so that's never a bad thing to see. I'll just go ahead and clear this. And uh, today we're on 4.4, laws of logarithms. So first, I want to remember laws of exponents. Because what do we know about logarithms and exponents? Well, they're, they're inverses of each other. In fact, the logarithm is, is defined in terms of an exponential. So let's say. I've got some exponential a to the x, and I multiply it by a to the y. What does that give me? That gives me a to the x plus y, doesn't it? Right? OK. So what do we have here? What do we have? We've got an interesting sort of result that relates to logarithms. Let's, let's look at the logarithm of both sides now. Log base a. Okay, log base a of a to the x times a to the y log base a of a to the x plus y Yeah, on the right side, this is pretty simple. It's something that we saw last time as one of our properties. This is just x plus y, right? Just x plus y. That we have the same base, so the logarithm and the exponential cancel out. That was a what property three, I think, from last time. On the left side, though, this does not look familiar. Right? It's the logarithm of something. But we don't know what that would be yet. Except now that we see what it is, it's, it's this. Okay? <clears throat> well, what do we notice about this x and the y? Well, x is actually the same as log base a of a to the x, isn't it? And this y is just log base a of a to the y. Well, isn't that handy? It looks like, at first glance here, and it, it is true, it looks like if you have the logarithm of a product, right, we've got a to the x times a to the y. This, what I've written here, suggests that this is equal to a sum of logarithms. That's a pretty handy tool. So in general, this is true. If you have the logarithm, any base, of a product. So I'm just going to write a big number A times a big number B. Right? They don't have to be in an exponential form like I've got here. It can be any number. Well, in general, this is equal to log of the first one, a plus, okay, we're taking this single logarithm and we're turning it into a sum of logarithms, plus log base a of the second factor, okay, it's really nice, it's really nice, okay, this is the first law of logarithms. We can turn a logarithm of a product 
into a sum of logarithms. Okay, what is the second law? Well, it, it's similar. It's very similar to this. And it is based on quotients instead. Log base A of a quotient, A over B. What do you think that's going to equal? Well, I, it's kind of a leading question. Well, let's look at A over B real quick. Well, that's the same as A times 1 over B, right? Well, that's the same as A times B to the negative first, right? So we could rewrite this as log base A of A plus log base A of B to the negative first. Okay, now we could look at this. Log base A of B to the negative first. That's just equal to some number Y, right? And in particular, it's the number Y which gives us B to the negative first. Right? Okay, so now we'll think about this in terms of getting rid of this negative sign. How about we take the reciprocal of both sides? If these two numbers are the same, then we can take the reciprocals and we get the exact same thing as well. So that gives us B equals A to the negative Y. These are equivalent statements. Now this translates backwards to this, negative Y plus 1. So this is just some number which is negative if the B has a plus. So I'll take this negative sign away and I'll make this a negative sign. And we've got it. This is the second law of logarithms. The logarithm of a quotient is equal to the difference of logarithms. The logarithm of the numerator minus the logarithm of the denominator. And that's why. Okay, the third and final law that we've got today. And this is essentially um, what we worked out last time. I think it's property four now. When you take in, no, it was uh, property two, I think. When you take the logarithm of something, which has the same base as your logarithm, but that something is raised to a power, you just get the result of the power back. But this time, there's a slight complication. Here we're going to have logarithm of A, base A, of C. Oh, uh, your book writes A, excuse me. Big A to the C. So here we don't exactly know, this is the complication, we don't exactly know that those are the same number, little a and big A. It could be different. But the result is not too far off from what we would expect. If they were the same, what would we say? It's just C, right? If they were the same, that's property two, I think, from last time. If they're not the same, you need to have an extra factor of the logarithm base little a of big A. Right, so I could give you a quick example. Log base two of eight. Right, that's log base two of two to the third power. Right, so this is three. Simply because two is two. Okay? Maybe I can write it another way. I'll make this one 16. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna write this differently than what you would expect. I could write this as two to the fourth, and then we would know it's easily four. But what if I write this as four squared? This base is not the same as that, right? Okay, so rule three says we can take this power to the front. 
So this is 2 times log base 2 of 4. Okay. Well, what is the log base 2 of 4? Four? 4 is 2 squared, so that's just 2. So it's 2 times 2, which is 4, which is what we could have known from the very beginning, because 16 is 2 to the 4th. But here, you're seeing rule 3 uh, worked out explicitly. Right? So if this wasn't a perfect power of 2, you know, if this were a 5 or something in here, then you wouldn't be able to tell me what that is without a calculator. But that, And that's sort of the point here, is you can simplify logarithms by pulling down powers into the front. So the argument of your logarithm gets smaller by doing that. Okay. So these are your three laws of logarithms. First is that you can take the logarithm of a product and write it as a logarithm sum. The second is that you can take the logarithm of a quotient and write it as a difference of logarithms. And the third is that the logarithm of the power of something is just that power times the logarithm of the base. You can pull down the powers. Okay, now there's really not much in this section except a bunch of examples. So let me do one example here, and I will use all of these things, I think, in this one. Yeah, I'll use every single one. So here we go. This is example 2C. So it's literally like one of the hardest ones that they give you, 2C. And they want you to expand the natural log of any number A times any number B over the third root of any number c. So to expand a logarithm means to try and use these things to write this very compact logarithm as a big sum or difference of things. Okay, and so that's what we're going to try and do here. And first, You can, you can do whatever you want first, but what I would do first is I would uh, get rid of this fraction. So I'm going to write this as the natural log of a times b minus the log, natural log, of the third root of c. That's just property two. Okay. Next. I'll use property one. Right here, we've got a times b. So this is the natural log of a plus the natural log of b minus the natural log of the third root of c. Well, the third root of c, we remember, is c to the one third power. So, rule three says that this is just the natural log of A plus the natural log of B minus one third natural log of C. And that's it. That is the fully expanded form. Notice that there's only one thing plugged in to each logarithm. There's just an A here, just a B here, just a C here. If these were products still, I'd have to expand them further. If there were powers on any of them, I'd have to pull them down. But this is fully expanded because we've got just one input, which is not a product. It's not an exponential. Just one thing plugged into each logarithm. That's it. That's the final expanded solution. Why is that important? Well, because back in the day, you could only look up logarithms of one number at a time. So <laughs> you'd have to look up this one, and this one, and that one, and you have to take a third of that one by hand, and then just perform the difference and, so, and the addition. OK. OK, so for ease of computation, expansion is, is important. All righty. We'll do more examples of that in class on Wednesday. The next thing to learn about is something called the change of base formula. So I'll 
write that down and give you an example of it, and then we'll call it a day on this lecture. So the change of base says if you have a logarithm, some base b, they're, they're changing it here to base b of some input x. You can rewrite this with a new choice of base. It's like if you don't like the number b, whatever it is, you want something else like the number a. You are welcome to make that change if you think it'll make your life better. And in order to do so, you have to do this. So the log base a, that's your new base, of the same input x needs to be divided by log base a, that's your choice of a, of your old base b. Okay. So it's, it's pretty close, right? You, you can't just change it. If you could, this would equal just the numerator, right? If you could just change the number at will, then you, you would just get the numerator out. But you can't. There's a scaling factor that has to do with your choice of A and the old base B. There's a scaling factor there. So some quick examples of this would be something like, let's say you've got log base 16 of x, and you don't like working in base 16. You're not that kind of computer scientist, right? So you want to work in base 2, although hexadecimal is not too bad here. Used in memory addresses and things, I think. So log base 16 of x is you want to change it to base 2. So you say this is the log base 2 of x divided by log base 2 of 16. Well, we all know 2 to the 4th is 16, right? 2, 4, 8, 16. So this denominator is just 4. So in this case, if you want to change your base from 16 to 2, all you need to do is multiply every result you get by one fourth, or divide every result you get by four. Okay, so the, this gives you a relationship between log base 16 of x and log base 2 of x. Log base 2 of x is just four times bigger than log base 16. Okay, so this is the change of base formula. It does come in handy, um, in particular when professors are really mean and <laughs> to give you um, <clears throat> give you strange bases to compute in. It allows you to choose, I guess, to pick your poison, I guess, if you will. So that's it for this section, 4.4 uh, on laws of logarithms. We'll see more examples of these on Wednesday's class when we talk about problems from these sections. So I hope that helps, and I'll see you next time.